In this tutorial, I'm going to try to do a quick beginner's guide on Xtool Creative Space. There's been a couple new updates since the last time that I made a video, so I'm going to try to talk about what's in the new updates, give a brief step-by-step -step guide of some of the important things that you might need as a beginner laser engraver. So when you first open up Xtool Creative Space, you'll see this page. You can see your recent projects, some recommended projects from Xtool, and some trending projects. These are great projects that you can try out on your own and see what works best for you and it might give you some more ideas to spark some imagination and uh, cool projects in the future. So to start out you'll create a new project here at the top, the green button. And once it loads it brings you onto a blank canvas. And once you get to this blank canvas, the first thing you really need to do is come up to this Xtool logo in the top left corner, which is the main menu drop down arrow. Click on it, go to settings, go to about Xtool creative space, and check for updates. You can see that mine's at the latest version, but you want to make sure that yours is also in the latest version so you have all the proper updates and that your Xtool Creative Space is primed and ready to go. So once you get that, come up to General and make sure all these settings are how you want it. If you want the units in millimeters or inches, what language you want Xtool Creative Space in, if you want some of these canvas options selected, and you can play around a little bit with each one of them and find out what works best for you. So to start off, there's uh, different pages that you can create within a blank page on Xtool Creative Space. So there's multiple tabs, just like on Google, you can have uh, different tabs for different projects. And within those tabs, you can have different canvases. So let's say you're doing a box. And one of the tabs up top, you want to be just the box itself, such as the outside of the box, the walls of the box, and the lid of the box. And then on each canvas, you'll have each side and the top of the box. Well, you also might want another tab up top that shows what you're going to engrave on the box if you're going to engrave a picture of something. So that's one way to keep your project separated and uh, make sure that everything's in order how you want it. So first off, coming down this left sidebar is the image tool. Click on it and it adds an image. So here's just a simple image of the outline of a basketball. There's a lot of different things on Creative Space that you can do with this image. Here at the top, you can change the location of the image based off of the X and the Y axis. You can change the height and the width of the image. You can change its rotation. You can arrange images based off of the layer that you want it on the page. You can align the image anywhere on the page that you'd like. You can invert and reflect the image. You can edit the image, trace the image, filter the image with some different image filters, adjust the color and saturation of the images, crop the image, put an outline of the image so you can engrave around it. One thing that I know that I'd have to do with this image is remove some of this white background from it so that it doesn't engrave the whole square of the image, that it just engraves the basketball itself. One way I do that is come to the top in the edit. Here on the magic wand, I can remove all the white space within the basketball, making it a transparent image. Hit save. Then if I want to outline around the image so it can cut around the image while keeping the engraving, just go to outline. I want to remove the inner circle, then hit confirm. And then here's the basketball. Okay. Next up, I can add text. Just come to the text box, and then you can type in anything that you need as far as text goes. Next up, I can add different shapes, such as lines, rectangles, circles, pretty basic stuff there. I can add a vector, create points, connect them all together, and then make my own shape. I can also add vectors within the vector that if I want to change it up a little bit, I can. 
Next up, we have some more complex shapes. So here we have basic shapes, some borders that we can use for different engravings, some plants and trees and other type of engravings, some animals, different Christmas, Halloween, and other festival uh, images, some patterns, parts, and just some miscellaneous other images. And we can use these images. Just click on one, and this would be something cool to engrave if you're just making something like an earring or a coaster or something like that. Next up is the AI feature. This is a pretty cool new tool that you can use. You just open it up, just type in what you want in the description. So, guy with glasses, and then you can generate an AI image based off of it. But you have to be logged into XTool Creative Space for this, and you only get a certain number of images that you can generate for a certain time frame. This is more of an advanced option though. Next up are some other applications that you can do, such as creating a grid array where you can uh, make different amounts of the image that you have, change the spacing. This would be great if you're making leather cutouts or something like that where you can make multiple ones on one big piece of leather without having to make one, move your, the module of your engraver, make another and so on and so forth. You probably won't use the circular array very much being a new engraver, but you just select the image, click on it, and it makes multiple images on a array point right in the middle of your uh, selected image. So this would be good if you maybe wanted a coaster with a bunch of hearts or some sort of image around it. Uh, that way you know that it's in a circle, but this isn't a good image for that, so we won't dive too deep into it. Test material array is pretty cool. You can uh, figure out what speed and power you need for your test image. This would be great. Uh, for a new engraver if they've got a certain type of material that they're wanting to test out and lastly you can generate QR codes but I won't go too deep into that either lastly the three tools here on the bottom this first tool just helps you select images within the document the tool under that is a grabber tool so you can move around the canvas and lastly, you can have different layers. So let's say I have a couple different images here. I can put one on top of the other. So I make sure that I have the image where I want it. You can also lock an image with this little lock icon. So if I move the other two images, that image stays put. The only way I can move this image back is if I click on it and unlock it. I can also hide the image with this little eyeball tool. So that's pretty much everything here on the left sidebar. Going up here to the top bar, I showed you before how to go to the Xtool main menu. This is how you insert new projects and save your projects. You can copy and paste with the edit tool and then if you need some help it can bring up some extra articles and guides to help you in any situation you should have. The settings, there's a lot of different stuff here that you probably won't need. And if you do, a lot of it you can look on the internet and find some different message boards on ways to change your engraver to fit the exact style that you want it. Here you can save your engraving. This is a quick save button. Here's one that's very important is the undo and redo buttons. So if you accidentally mess up something and you want to go back to the way it was, you just hit undo or redo. Here's where you update and name your canvas. So if I want to change the name of this to blank, I can. Now here's a pretty important feature on the X tool is what type of engraving you want to process. So whether you want it on a flat surface, like a little piece of wood, on a rotary tool or a chuck tool. So here's the roller and the chuck options, uh, the slide extension or the screen preparation. And these are all important because if you try to engrave 
a flat object using the rotary tool setting then the engraving will not look right so just be careful there next up we'll look at the right sidebar so if you select the image you see there's three di different options here score which just cuts around the image engraved which actually engraves the inside of the image and then cut which also cuts around the image so it will cut all this you see here and around the image so the power and speed is something very important that you're going to have to learn uh, throughout your engraving based off of different materials. Certain materials require more power and less speed and vice versa. For me, I use a lot of basswood, which is just a real thin type of wood that normally takes around 80 power and 70 speed. You can look online to find some uh, user material guides that can help you figure out exactly what is needed. So one cool new thing that Xtool Creative Space allows you to do is select your image, come up here to user defined material, and select on different types of material that you might want to use for your engravings. So let's say you want to engrave a stainless steel dog tag. You can click on that, click confirm, and it gives you the recommended speed and power needed to engrave on that dog tag. So if I want to let's say engrave an image of a monkey on a dog tag for some reason, I know that that'll be 100% power and 10 millimeters per second as the engraving. So that might not be exactly right for any type of dog tag or any other type of material that you want to do, but just play around with it, see what works best for you, and just use this as a, a base to go off of. Also here on the bottom, you can tell how many passes you want for your engraving. So let's say that you have an engraving that you want a little bit darker or you're trying to cut out an engraving. Uh, sometimes I don't like to use as much speed and power when I'm cutting out an engraving. I'll just do multiple passes, which sometimes makes for less burn marks. These last few things are not really needed unless you engrave quite a bit. So it's important to frame your image, shows exactly where your image is going to engrave on your piece of material. Then once you have your engraving ready and framed up, you can go to your process. So here's what your engraver will look like. So here on the left side, you can show where you want your module point of origin. So this is where the head of your engraver will start, whether it be the top left corner or the center or wherever. A lot of this other stuff you just play around with and see what works best for you. As long as you know what you're engraving, what point you're engraving it on, it should be pretty easy to start your engraving. Lastly is how to connect your Xtool to Xtool Creative Space. So my Xtool is plugged up and turned on and I also use the USB to plug it up to my computer. There's also a Bluetooth option that you can use, but I've just always liked to use the cord because it's very reliable. So you just come over to connect and now I am connected and ready to engrave. Thank you for watching. I hope you found some benefits in watching this video and you learned a little bit more about Xtool Creative Space. If you don't mind, please give the video a like and please subscribe to my channel. Also, in the description, you can find my Etsy page and some links to buy Xtool and then some Xtool materials to start your engraving journey. Thanks and have a great one.